All right, all right, all right. Hey, everybody, how y'all doing tonight, today, this afternoon? All right, I'm super excited to be here. This is awesome. I, uh, I love being in the room with salespeople. Salespeople get me energized, excited, and stoked. And so when Max called me up and uh, invited me to be a part of this, I was just, you know, I was beside myself. And so being on the stage with people like John Barrows and, uh, you know, just un unbelievable speakers. I'm just awesome and, and happy to be here uh, and thankful for everybody. So I'm going to talk today about how our reps at SalesLoft are averaging above 400%. And uh, as I looked at this slide, uh, you know, as I looked at it, I said, man, if I'm in the audience, I'm going to say the reason why is because your quota is not high enough. So I'm going to go ahead and take that objection off the table for everybody. Um, but we're really, you know, like I said, I'm really excited to share all this stuff with you. I've gone ahead and put these slides up online, but I left off an S. So B2B, S-A-L dot E-S slash sales hackers. There's an S on the end. That'll take you to these slides, and uh, you can see them there. So they're already up on, on the web. So I am Kyle Porter. I'm the CEO and founder of a company called SalesLoft. This is my team. We were five people in January of this year, and now we're 14. And we were one person in January of 2013 last year. So what we do is we build the easiest and simplest way on the internet to create lists of accurate and targeted prospects. We'll go into that a little bit more, uh, but I started the company back in 2011 on my face 2012, rebooted back to myself in January of last year, and now we've built a great business. So along the lines of Aaron Ross, just to share some personal things about me, uh, in addition to being a software CEO, I'm a tangerine farmer. So I've got a six acre tangerine farm in central Florida. And I don't have 800 kids like Aaron Ross, but I've got a little kitty and a little dog down in Florida. And then I just got the big news from my wife that we're having our first girl. So I'm excited to uh, move into fatherhood. But the reason I'm here today is that I'm a lover of marketing and sales. And since starting SalesLoft, I've published over 300 articles on the web. I've hosted sales events. And one of the coolest things was I was honored last year as being the top writer for Salesforce.com, which was really exciting, especially since the CEO, Mark Benioff, was number two. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> and I got my two minutes of fame at Dreamforce, 70,000 people, uh, the largest software event in the world. Benioff's on stage. And he introduces me, not really, but he puts my, my face up on the screen, puts my body up on the screen, and he cut off my head. <laughs> so that's me. You can see the little sales off logo on the t-shirt. But we're here to talk today about crushing quota. And uh, I talked about how the quota could be a little bit larger, but our quota for monthly, a, monthly new ARR, so each month the ARR added by our sales reps is $48,000. And what that means is if a sales rep hits quota every single month, we add over a half million dollars to the top line recurring annual revenue. And these are the numbers of our two sales reps in March. We only had two, we have three executives now, we had two BDRs in March. And so these guys are raking it in, they're killing it, they're also making 18% commission on that number, so do the math, that's what they made in commission in March. So these guys are getting paid, they're, they're both millennials. And I've got some takeaways that have just you know, kind of my perspective on how we got there. Uh, just to look at the numbers of our company. So if you look back in November, we were basically at very minimal revenue, and now we're at $1.3 million run rate. Uh, we're a cash flow positive business, added over 850,000 ARR in Q1, and on track to do a million in Q2. So we'll be at 2 million ARR uh, right at the beginning of Q3. So let's talk about what's important. As the CEO of the company, the thing that matters to me more than anything is the culture of my business. As a CEO, I believe that the only thing that I can do that I have complete control over is the culture of our business, who we let in, what we focus on, and who we fire. And I recently read an article. It was uh, the CEO of Airbnb. Does everyone know Airbnb, the company? He wrote an article, and uh, the title of the article was Don't Fuck Up Culture. And it was a quote by this guy, Peter Thiel, who's a multi-billionaire, super investor. He's like number 200 on the Forbes, most richest people. And I saw this and said, yeah, this is validating what we're talking about and what we're thinking about. And so sales and, and culture is the most important thing for us. And so the way we think about it is we say, we want to hire 
people who are the top 1% of all humans in these three categories, which are our core values. Positive, supportive, and self-starting. And this is the core of everything that we do. And when we go in any interview, this is the number one thing that we focus on. Sure, they have to be uh, able to do the job. They have to have sales skills or talents. A lot of times we're grooming people from the ground up anyways. But this is the thing that we're focused on, is bringing on positive, supportive, and self-starting people and doing it religiously. So how do you do that? Uh, I thought this next slide was next, but what, what we're also doing is we're looking for people who are punching above their weight class. So when we bring on reps, when we bring on people for sales, we're looking at folks that can take that next big leap up in their career, and this is the way we talk about it internally to our employees. So Anthony, who runs sales, he was on the, the second slide, you know, we say, is this guy punch above his weight class? Now, how much does this person punch, punch above their weight class? And it's the language that we use. We ask questions like, why did you choose the school that you went to? And it helps us understand if they're self-starting. We ask questions like, how ambitious are you on a scale of one to 10? And watch their response. And so these things help us understand those core values. The other thing we do, and we got this from a guy named Derek Grant, VP of sales at Pardot. He shared with us, his concept for hiring sales reps, and he said, we have this canoe test. And what the canoe test is, is that someone that's not in sales spends time with the candidate as they're coming on, and this is a developer or someone in customer service or even a marketer, and the whole goal is, if you were in a canoe with this person for a day, could you stand them? If, you were, if they were behind you, would you believe that they were rowing and doing their job? Would you want to push them out, right? And so we say, hey, Rob, will you run a canoe test on this guy? And he'll go run a canoe test. And it's all about, does this person fit in with our culture? And so this is the sales team that we've brought on board. Uh, guy on the left is inbound BDR, responsible for setting 80 demos a month. The next guy is our first sales hire and also the kind of team lead. The guy in the middle is quota crusher. The guy on the right just hired. And the guy on the far right is our outbound BDR who's responsible for generating 40 outbound demos per month. And he did 50, he's done 50 so far this month. So we're, uh, we're on track. So that's culture, culture's super important. By the way, if anyone has any questions and want, this is a lot of high level stuff, so if you have any questions, just shoot them at me and uh, we can kind of run with the flow. The second thing is the concept of human plus machine. So we don't think it's good enough to be human anymore. And I like to use an analogy of Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr. Everyone's seen Iron Man, right? Okay, cool. So in Iron Man, Tony Stark is an amazing human being. He's a genius. He's got like three PhDs, billion dollar businesses, beautiful women. He's an amazing human. But being an amazing human is not enough for Tony Stark. He wants to fly around the world and rid us of bad guys. So he partners with Machine. And the salespeople we talk to on a daily basis, especially ones that are seasoned, they're amazing at closing deals, opening opportunities, finding out challenges, presenting solutions, negotiating, all these things that sales of the old days. And those things are super important. If Tony Stark's flying around in a suit but he's an idiot, he's gonna make a lot of mistakes. And he's gonna be more dangerous than he's helpful. But salespeople today, it's not enough just to be human. You've gotta partner with machines. You've got machines in your pocket and there's machines on the web. And so we take this attitude that all of our salespeople are human plus machine. They've got all the different Chrome tabs that need to be open. They know how to use all the different plugins. They've got text accelerators, shortcuts on their phone. We take the approach that we're going to be the best human salespeople we can be, but we're also going to use the tools as fast, as quick, and as best we can. So that's the human plus machine. The second, one of the big concepts of today is, is BDR stuff. BDR, SDR, cold caller, appointment setter, whatever you want to call it. When we got into the business, we said we have to do this right because it's so important. And as I was getting ready for this presentation, I said, what are the four most important things with the sales development rep? So these are the ones that I, I brought up. The first one is priority. Inside of Predictable Revenue in Aaron's book, there's a quote somewhere buried in there and it says, too many people look at the BDR role as a low-level role, and therefore they get low-level results. 
We've got 275 clients at Sales Loft, and we see it all the time. Yeah, I'm just going to hire this junior person and let them cold call and email and you know, follow the predictable revenue method. Or, hey, I'm going to get an intern, and they're going to go source on the web and find people so that we can email them and cold call them and get appointments. And every time they take this attitude and approach, we see them fail. So at Sales Loft, our BDRs are special to us. We put their results up on the big screen TV. We celebrate them when they have victories. When they have a great email that's returned with an awesome response, we forward it to the team and to our mentors and to the people that are stakeholders or our company. And BDR is super important to us and we prioritize it and that helps us have a lot of productivity there. The second is data. Everybody, there's so many people out there have been using these legacy data systems for way too long. You know who they are, they're Dun & Bradstreet, Jigsaw, you know, net prospects, I'm sorry if they're in the room, I, you know, I don't care. It, these systems are old, they're legacy data providers. They curate and, and keep that data up to date themselves, right? And we're gonna have to fly. So that's data, and I think that the best source of data on the internet is social sources like LinkedIn, where people keep their own information up to date themselves, right? They've got this social pressure to keep their profile up to date. Cadence is what we talk about, I'm gonna skip it. You've heard better things from other people. And magic, no one's really talking about this. When our BDRs start emailing and setting appointments, what wins is when they're creative. When they make a funny joke, when they take a funny picture of their mustache and send it to a prospect and get them to laugh. When they send that image that has a guy being chased by a hippo and ask if we wanna call animal control or if we can have a demo, right? These are the things that really go from getting those you know, getting 30 demos a month to getting 50 demos a month and 60 demos a month. So you've got to have magic, you've got to have culture, you've got to have your own creativity in the BDR process. Easy wins, I just got the five minute mark so I'm gonna skip this one. What this says is when we bring on a sales rep, we make it simple for them to get their first deal, we make it a little less simple to get their next deal, we make it less simple to get their next deal, and their fourth deal they do it all on their own. But we hand them that first deal, like all they have to do is click opportunity one in Salesforce but we let them have that, and they feel it, and they, and they get off to a good start, and it kicks ass. That guy, by the way, started on uh, the first of the month. He's already at 22,000, the guy on the right, Kevin. Okay, this is, this is like a John Barrows one right here. When we get on the phone, not BDR, now AE, we get on the phone with a prospect, and we say, Mr. Prospect, what are your revenue goals this quarter? What do you wanna do in revenue this year? Are you gonna get there? Who's responsible? How are you gonna get there? And we challenge the shit out of them to find out how they're going to get what they want to get. Do you want to be great? Do you want to return that number to your VP or your CEO? How are you going to get there? And then we keep working those objectives until we tie it back to our solution. So we sell a sales tool that helps you build lists of prospects. So how many demos do you need in order to get to your number that you just said you have to get to? Okay, how are you gonna get that many demos? You got this many inbound leads, you're doing this with outbound. What if you up that 3X? All right, there's, there's the tie into our solution. And now we've got urgency with the buyer, and we've got it tied in to what they're responsible for, the number that they have to do. So that's tying in objectives with the solution. Transparency and accountability, this is my favorite. I'm about to show you all the metrics that matter to my business. As a CEO and former VP of sales at my company, being transparent to my team has helped them thrive. It's helped them be their own CEOs in the business, so that I don't have to micromanage them. And so we put all of our metrics on a 70 inch TV for our company to see all the time, and now we just put it here for you guys. So we, are, we have a run rate of 1.282, actually we don't, we've closed two deals today, so that number's bigger. But I took that on the flight over with Aaron this morning, and uh, we did 372 in April, 54 customers, you can see it. So we put this up everywhere, and it really, really helps. The second is, is this the one page? No, this is the weekend update. Every single Sunday night since January of last year, I send an email to everyone involved in sales law. Our employees, our stakeholders, our friends. My dad is BCC'd on this email, and it's the KPIs for every single department of our company. And so these are the sales and, and BDR ones, and it says, here's how many emails Anthony sent. Here's how many emails Wayne sent. And by sending this, they know, hey man, the Sunday report's coming out and it's going to 20 people. I better have good numbers on there. Or I better have better numbers than Anthony, right? So it causes this healthy competition, this excitement, 
and people are really enjoying the weekend update. Now they know everything that's happening with the business. The other thing we do is we practice this concept. This is from, has anyone ever read the Rockefeller Habits? So this is a Rockefeller Habits meets Patrick Lencioni uh, exercise, and it's a one-page strategic plan where this one sheet of paper will tell me everything that I need to know about my business and what we're trying to accomplish. We also have one for the sales team. So core values, mich mission, what are we trying to accomplish? What are our targets? What are our KPIs? What do we have to do this quarter? And this thing's money. If anyone wants it, I'll send you a copy of the template. Anything you've seen on here, I'm happy to send a copy of the template to. Um, and I'm gonna fly through. I'm a sales guy, I'm here at the conference. I don't have a booth like CowDap, but we are cash flow positive, so we'll pay for the next one, uh, Max, wherever you are. But I wanna show a quick demo of sales loft. Is that okay if I do that two minutes? All right, cool. So BDRs and people who are prospecting come to sales loft and they say, I wanna call on, a, on my ideal customer profile. In this case, we got VPs of sales in the Boston area. Drop it in that box and hit search. The search results pop up. Sales Loft tells Google how to find those people on LinkedIn, and then you click the blue button to add those people one by one. You can click the green button to add them all at once. Sales Loft pulls in first, last, company title, LinkedIn public profile, company domain. Then we go find corporate email address, then we find corporate phone number, and we let you sync that with the CRM with a click of a button. We've also got a plugin that lives inside of LinkedIn. You run a search, any parameters inside of LinkedIn, Alex, it could be media executives. You pull them all up, you hit the button, you add them to your list, and now you've got them. So sales off, simplest way on the internet to create accurate and targeted lists of leads. And with that, I'm done, and would love to answer some questions. Please, at least one. Yes? What are some of the tools, like favorite tools to make pamphlets? Yeah, so, um, I love, uh, I love Chrome browser to start, uh, all the Google app suite. We're, all of our people are trained on all the shortcuts for Chrome and all the shortcuts for Gmail. So everybody knows JJK, LEA, all the different buttons. Um, earlier when John spoke, I mentioned a tool called Newsle, N-E-W-S-L-E, -E. love this tool. One click, connect to your LinkedIn, it takes all of your connections, and goes and finds them whenever they're mentioned on the web. So every time John Barrows gets an article on the web, I get an email and it says, John's speaking here, John did this, here's an article of John. And I'm able to see that, forward to him and say, hey man, congratulations, this is kick ass. Right, thanks for putting our logo in your slide deck. Right, and uh, so is a cool tool. Nutshell Mail is a super cool tool, free tool. The way we use that is we think that Twitter sucks for salespeople, and we don't want our salespeople on Twitter all the time. But we know there's a lot of value there and we wanna mine it out. So our sales reps take their VIP prospects, the top 40 or 30, and they put them on a private list inside of Twitter, and they connect that to Nutshell Mail. Then every morning, Nutshell emails them and says, here are just the tweets from just the people that you give a shit about. Here's the top 40. And they read it and they say, oh man, uh, Alex just did this. I'm gonna connect with them. I'm gonna favorite it. I'm gonna retweet it. And so they're able to drip just on the people that matter the most to them. Uh, my team uses Tout app. Um, on their blog two days ago, was uh, we were the users of the week, and our BDR who's uh, killing quota, he's got some fun tricks on how he's using it, and it does involve the man being chased by a hippo image, which is really fun. Um, other tools, we use the hell out of our tool. Obviously, we use Pardot for marketing automation. We use Salesforce for our CRM. We use we used to use uh, Echo Sign, but now we've built in our own uh, kind of proposal system into our application. Um, yeah, those are some of them. Yes. Yes. It's an MX handshake. So we say, okay, um, somebody's at HubSpot.com. That's we know their domains, HubSpot.com. We know their name, and we initiate relationship with the mail server. We send over. We have a finite list of configurations of first name and last name. We do a mail handshake to say, does this exist? Does this exist? Does this exist? And if the mail server doesn't communicate back like we want. We have a database of 20 million email addresses with patterns. We say, what's the most popular pattern for this domain? Is it first dot last? Is it F last? Is it first underscore? Whatever. One more? Yes.
Yeah, so if we don't get it from the mail server and we have the patterns that we recommend, but one of them you don't know if it's right or not, you can copy those emails and drop them in Reportive. You know Reportive? So it's a Gmail extension, sits in your Gmail, drop all the email addresses in, and it'll look through all those email addresses and see if they line up with the social profile. And when, we, when they do, then you've found your winner. Cool. All right, thanks everybody.